So the theme of this video is going to be dealing with physical damage uh, without your EX. So what's the idea? Um, Fiori X is a very very efficient physical uh, defender uh, with her counter ability. And she can do some stuff that no other unit in the game can. But if you don't have Fiori X, a lot of the fights just uh, entail t tanking physical damage. And this is what we're gonna see here. How can we deal with physical damage? But first, a few notes. Um, to begin with, if the enemy cannot be taunted, if the enemy cannot be taunted, then uh, the only other choice is Albrick because he's the only he's the only unit that has cover, other than Fior EX. So, uh, with that said, uh, let's move on to what units are gonna be the choice here. Um, and then the first choice is, uh, your first choice would probably be Gilderoy. I'm going to use Devin here, um, because he has 15% passive damage up. Gilderoy has 20% passive damage up, so, um, in the long run with a lot of buffs and debuffs, that means that Gilderoy takes basically half of the damage. So you'd want to use Gilderoy instead of Devin if you have him, especially if you have his ultimate level 10. And the other note is this, uh, if you don't have your EX, in almost all other cases you're gonna need your, your damage dealers to be able to deal more damage than if you had your EX. Uh, just because uh, your EX is so efficient and requires zero setup. So for this setup we have two um, two topics. The first one is going to be uh, Eleonora with the Brave Fan and the reason is that she can extend and cap both passive and active physical defense. Uh, in the case of Devin she won't cap, it's gonna be 25% but it would be 30% for Gilderoy. And so I, I picked this fight against the uh, Grand Port NPC so we can take a look at what's happening here. So let's uh, let's speed this up. What what we want to do is this. So we start the fight. So the first thing that we want to do is this. In this case, uh, we're gonna wanna taunt with Devin, and we want to take actions here. And this is because this uh, NPC counters. We want to take actions here that don't deal damage to our units. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna inflict defense down, a bow defense down with a Chloe, and um, do some uh, physical attack up with the other uh, bow guys. So desperate resolve to taunt. Then some bow down. Now, what we're going to do is, um, since we paired Alfin with Devin, we can, and the reason we did this is because the other roles will be attacking and taking counter attacks. So what we did here is we made Alfin faster than all the other units, and uh, with Alfin faster, he's gonna hit these three guys who are gonna be taking counter attacks. So I don't need to use Chloe heal and I can shave more shields. Um, so uh, Devin's defense is still not maxed. Uh, we still need the warrior's waltz. So we're basically missing 30% uh, of his defense still. Uh, but, but he has some healing and he can kind of tank in the beginning. So here I used a shower of arrows with uh, with um, Scarecrow. I shouldn't have because he's gonna take a hit, 
and since there is no taunt, if he would have taken the second hit, he would have died. So just don't do this. Use a skill that doesn't trigger the counterattack in this specific fight. So what did we do here? Uh, we used anti-attack and we basically kept his attack down. So, and, and this turn, uh, another, since Devin, it's, it's really not hard to be faster than the NPC, but we gave Devin a spear with a lot of speed, so he always comes back first. And this is very useful because this means that he can, uh, he, against a fast NPC, he can always defend whoever is behind him. So we get some taunt here. And we don't need to heal with Chloe. And that's because we have uh, Alfin's region. This is one of the advantages of having Eleonora. And now we can just we can just take a look at how Devin is gonna tank, even without his ultimate. Uh, his uh, he has terror here, so um, I wouldn't be able to boost anyways. Just keep taunting, shaving some shields. And Devin is still tanking it. You see how little damage he takes. Now this is a turn to prepare for the break. So you left him with two shields. Now Devin took took some damage from magic here, but it's fine. Magic usually doesn't deal that much damage against this NPC anyways. So we prepare the break and we nuke. And when, one thing to do on this turn is that uh, if you take a look at this, Devin has two more uh, passive defense down. So we're gonna wanna swap Eleonora either this turn or the next. So I, I chose to swap her in this turn. It, it really didn't matter very much. So, uh, on, th on the break turn, on the last break turn, it's important to bring uh, your Gilderoy or Dev into the front row so he can taunt the, the follow-up attack. This is something that you'd, need, you'd not need with Fiori X, but with a taunt, you gotta do this. Uh, the good thing is, since the NPC moves first, whoever is behind Devin, if you make, if you make him fast, uh, is free to do whatever it is that you want. So, aside from that mistake on turn one, uh, we had zero risk of any unit dying here so far. So we're just capping physical attack down again. And now we're hoping to use Eleonora to cap physical defense down so we can deal more damage. Later on we're gonna wanna use uh, Chloe's ultimate to further buff the to further buff our attack. We end up running out of uh, SP here. Uh, Cause I didn't plan for the SP but uh, in the end it's gonna be fine. So all that Devin is doing is essentially taunting and leaving some room for uh, Alfin. And by the way, it could have been any healer. We didn't have SP to take advantage of Pomegranate anyways. Now this would be the turn that uh, the NPC would attack with uh, AoE, so we really have to break him this turn. We used pomegranate, but in the end it didn't really matter. Uh, 
And that's the fight. As if you take a look at the items here. Let's take a quick look at the items. So what you're gonna see is that we gave Devin a Lance of Fortune. It, it's interesting that his HP doesn't matter. So uh, the Lance of Fortune here, you want to use one soul for speed, uh, two souls for speed and one soul for elemental attack. So his, uh, his passive healing actually heals for something. So these are two speed rooms, just so he's, which we're trying to make him faster than the NPC. So he can always be at the front uh, when he casts taunt. So this way he can cast taunt, go to the back row. Uh, because when he switches to the back row, if it's a slow unit behind him, he's going to be able to... He's going to be able to protect that unit. So that means that the NPC is never going to be able to hit the back row unit. It always comes after the NPC and goes away before the NPC acts. So we give the Brave Fam to Eleonora. Now let's move on to the case where you don't have Eleonora. So we're gonna use Davin and maybe it's a little surprising, but we're gonna use Hugo here. And the reason we're gonna use Hugo is that his passive is to grant the unit in, uh, in front of him uh, an extra 10% uh, physical defense up. So one natural thing would be to consider it Miles. But Miles gives a permanent 15%. That may solve the problem in some cases, but if the damage is very high, uh, this 10%, it makes a lot of difference. It could mean taking two to three times the damage. And this is because how damage works in this game. So if your damage reduction is 90%, uh, you're taking 10% of the damage. If, if, you, if you use miles, then you lose 15% damage reduction. So if you had 90% 90, 90 damage reduction, suddenly you're working with 75 percent so you're gonna take more than two times the damage you'd be taking before and how can you get to 90 percent damage reduction if you debuff 30 percent physical attack and get 30 percent passive and active physical defense suddenly you have 90 percent physical damage reduction so w uh, one problem is with Davin and Hugo uh, your other units have to deal more damage uh, this is just because Hugo doesn't really contribute to damage or to breaking in most of the situations. If the enemy is weak to sword, then maybe. Uh, but generally he's gonna sit here and since he's very slow, we can use his uh, attack that, d that does 10% physical attack down to keep the damage low. So we never have to cast, for example, anti-attack with one of your, our units again. Let's see how this one goes. Now this time we, we want Devin to taunt turn one. So we can just go ahead and uh, do all our mitigation turn one. So what we're doing is anti-attack, taunt. Uh, in this case dual strike with uh, Richard is going to cap the fist down. Richard is extremely powerful, by the way. He, he's, a, he's backpacking the whole front row while capping the fence down in, in this one. We could also use him to buff physical attack if we needed. So by the end of this turn we'll have full full physical damage mitigation. So let's let's get back to the, the to the damage here. See, this is like 400 damage. Now, we do have full mitigation here. And since Yugo is really slow, we can make him act and we can bring Devin back next turn before the NPC acts. So whoever is behind the tank, Gilderoy or Devin, gets to act every other turn. We also need Chloe to do the healing this time because we can't pair a more useful unit with Devin. 
so he deals negligible damage and then Yugo comes in to extend the uh, physical attack down. No, nope, we're just keep doing this. So this time we use Devin uh, Desperate Resolve full boost. Then this is to charge uh, the ultimate. Now we're gonna want to save BP. We want to save the BP so that when the when we cast the ult we can start using the BP to recharge the ultimate as fast as we can so that we can cast ult before or ideally on the turn it would run out. So one thing to note is that on turn 6 Devin's physical, passive physical defense is going to run out. So at this point we're gonna wanna cast his ultimate to make up for the absence of his passive. So he keeps tanking like really well. And we keep shaving shield and, and going and, and getting this first break. So C Squacker. A very powerful uh, attack from this NPC. So Davin took a critical hit here and he got hit by 400. So this shows the power of uh, capping his defense up. Now note that this is the, generally we would want to cast Davin's ult on turn 5. But since we're gonna break next turn that's not really necessary. So we can cast Taunt to get an extra turn of Taunt, but then the turn after, uh, the second turn of the break, we will want to cast the ultimate. Uh, otherwise we would be uncovered, we would be missing 20% reduction. And the difference from 60% to 80% is essentially he would take twice as much damage without the ultimate. So we get a breather of four turns for Davin to tank. Dealing some damage here, breaking. So since this time there is no counter, uh, I decided to use this to reduce the bow defense uh, that I couldn't do before because otherwise I couldn't shave shields. So this is in preparation for the second break. Uh, this is going to charge up the ultimate uh, and also reduce bow defense. So we'll deal more damage on the second break. It would be nice to have had a bow uh, reduction here. But then again, we didn't have the turn economy to do that, because Chloe had to do some healing. Now, um, we want to use Yugo to keep uh, the defense down, to keep, to keep debuffing physical attack. So he can extend the duration with his skill. I was considering uh, using um, Richard to buff, but then I decided that I would extend the physical attack debuff with him. And and one of the reasons is that Zanta is gonna need more uh, more mana. Now it's important to go back with Warrior's Waltz here. Uh, to make sure that um, that Davin's at least his physical his active physical defense up stays stays there so this time he took a thousand damage and one of the reasons is that uh, his passive, he had 25% passive, now he has only 20% um, from his ultimate. 
the passive ran out. So even a 5% makes a huge difference. He took twice the damage here. And when his ult runs out, he's, he's gonna get destroyed. Now, another problem is that this NPC, uh, he inflicted... Um, he inflicted a terror, so we couldn't boost to have the second ultimate. Generally, we would be able to have the second ultimate uh, ready to go here. In this case, we didn't, but uh, it's it won't, you have to take a look at the particular fight. So this turn we have to break otherwise he's gonna destroy our team with uh, AOE spear. We use Chloe's ultimate in preparation for for the break. It would be nice to have had more SP with Chloe here so she could actually nuke but it's fine. So as you can see this time, uh, so Devin's ult is still running and we have another bar here. He would run out next turn so he can cast the ult again. So we get to extend the 6 initial turns 2 times and since each of his casts lasts 4, four turns, we essentially have... Um, that's, that's basically a 12 turn of uh, very high physical defense. Uh, of course with this strategy it's limited, with the Leonoro we could keep this going forever and Fiori X just doesn't need any setup at all but if you don't have uh, a Leonora and you don't have a Fiori X this is a strategy that can get you going for 12-13 turns depending on the break pattern 14 turns Remember that his that Oaken stance and also Gilroy's ultimate, it reduces physical damage by an extra 20%. If you already have 80 or 70% reduction, that means he's going to ta be taking three times less damage uh, with his ultimate. So maybe 20% or 10% doesn't look like too much on paper, but it's it's really a lot when you take into account other sources of damage mitigation. We're using Viola here because Chloe is completely dry. So we don't really have too much time. So we're just gonna throw everything we got while our hunters regenerate some. An interesting thing here is that uh, this time we used Viola's uh, ultimate. So this actually reduces the physical attack even more. So this means that his attack this turn really did almost doesn't deal any damage at all uh, but generally we, we wouldn't be doing this even if it, he would take like twice the damage uh, it would he would still Devin would still be fine in tanking now see the damage output was a little slower because Chloe had she she was busy healing and so she couldn't buff and debuff And the items really are the same as the previous clear, basically. What we want is a um, a, a spear for Devin that gives him speed and elemental attack. I can pause this at the correct place. There you go. So we want him to have some elemental attack and we want him to have enough speed so he uh, acts before the NPC so we can use him to defend the unit behind him in the case we have Eleonora. With Yugo it doesn't really matter, he's so slow. Uh, the good thing is that Yugo can keep extending the physical attack down uh, by himself.
And that is it for this short stream. I hope you like this.